let's cover some TypeScript 2 specific functionality, nullable types. So here we have defined an enum called player position and we have defined an interface player with a name and a position properties. Now we have here an object which is called Kobe, which is of type player. So let's add the type annotation here. Now this variable Kobe is of type player, but we could also assign it, for example, null, and we could also assign it undefined, and this would still compile, this would still be a valid TypeScript program. But we might not want this functionality, we might want to ensure that this variable is an instance of player, and that by some reason it cannot be null or undefined. We would like the type system to help us define that, declare this rule. In order to do so, let's configure the TypeScript compiler to turn on the strict null check mode to prevent this situation from occurring. For that, let's head over to the command line to the root of our project. So take a look, we are in the root of our complete TypeScript course folder repository. Now we are going to do tsc minus minus init. And this created here, in this folder, it created a tsconfig.json. This file is a configuration file that configures the TypeScript compiler with some commonly used options. Actually, until this moment in the course, we were actually using the TypeScript compiler via the WebStorm IDE and these options were actually already active. So, as we've seen before, whenever we use import and export that ECMAScript 6 syntax for modules in our program, we were compiling our program to CommonJS. We saw that before we were compiling imports to the require statement and exports to populating the exports property. As we can see here, we were already using our target as ES5, meaning that we are compiling to a version of JavaScript that is currently available in all browsers. We could compile TypeScript down to ES6, for example, if our target platform would be ES6 enabled. But we usually we compile to ES5 in most cases. Now take a look at these other two options. No implicit any set to false. We are going to cover what no implicit any is in a moment. Source maps, we will also have a specific section for debugging. So these two options will be explained later. Right now, we want to add here an option that is available since TypeScript 2 that will prevent this situation from occurring. So the ability to assign undefined to a variable that should be a type player. So in order to do, the property that we are looking for is strict null checks, which is by default false. We want to set it to true. Also, at this moment, we want to configure WebStorm to use this TS config. So use TS config. So this is why it's important that you put the TS config.json file in the root of the project so that WebStorm can take it from there. If you put it in another folder, WebStorm will not be able to use it and you will have differences between the errors that WebStorm is displaying you from when compared to the results that you would get from the command line. So this way you will get the same results in both environments. If we go back to the program, we can see that now we get an error for this situation. So it would take a moment for the compiler to be adjusted to the new options, but we can see here that now we get type undefined is not assignable to type player. You can also see the same error here in the TypeScript pane in the WebStorm IDE. You have a list of errors of the current program. So we have effectively prevented this situation from happening. We cannot also assign it to null. If we try to assign the variable Kobe to null, we get type null is not assignable to type player. So this is exactly what we expected. As you can see, this functionality is really very useful to catch all those null related errors that tend to pollute many of our programs, also errors related to undefined. So you might think, why isn't this option turned on by default? 
Well, this is so with TypeScript 2 due to backwards compatibility. So we want to make sure that programs that are written with TypeScript 1, we want to make it easier to migrate them to TypeScript 2. If we would have strict null checks set to true by default in TypeScript 2, that would introduce a major breaking change that it would make quite hard to migrate many programs from TypeScript 1 to TypeScript 2. So currently it's set to false by default to make it easier to upgrade to TypeScript 2. But if we are writing a new program, it's a great idea to turn this flag on since the beginning because this is one of the main features of TypeScript 2. Now let's go back to this program. There are situations where a variable can be nullable. So it could be an optional variable. Sometimes it's null and sometimes it contains a player, an instance of player. So how can we tell that to the type system so that this program compiles correctly? We can use a union type for it. We can say that the Kobe variable is a player or null. And now the program compiles correctly without any errors. Notice that if we assign this to undefined, we still get an error. Type undefined is not assignable to player or null. So we could take this one step further and we could add here the type undefined. And with this, the program would compile correctly. So now with TypeScript 2, we get the possibility to say which variables are nullable, which variables can be undefined and which variables are expected to always contain a value. So in the program that we are about to write, the REST interface that access a SQL database that we will be building in a moment, we are going to use strict null checks from the beginning.